Hi, folks, and welcome back to NTI's Japan Real Estate Property Investment Podcast. I'm your host, Ziv Nakajima, again, and once again, we've got an extra special treat of an interview for you today. With us on the line from Hong Kong is Mr. Dan Voville, co-founder and president of the Odyssey Capital Group. Now, Odyssey is one of Asia's leading alternative asset management companies, and they focus on unique value-added real estate assets. They've got a wide range of um, topics that the various companies in the group cover from corporate services like investment policy, planning and strategies, uh, trustee, wealth management, portfolio management, real estate development, transaction facilitation, and so forth. But what we'd really like to discuss with Dan today is their recently launched Japanese project, which many of our clients are already getting involved in, as well as other projects that they've been involved in here in Japan for the past few years. Dan, thanks for joining us today. It's a pleasure to have you with us. Thanks, Ziv, for having me today on your show. I'm delighted to be here. So, likewise. Now, before we dive right into Odyssey yeah. and its activities here in Japan, could you maybe give us a short intro to who you are personally? I know that you're originally from Perth in Australia, started your career in finance, investment banking for some big names like Ernst & Young, JP Morgan, the Mercury Group. So how did you end up in Hong Kong of all places and how did the idea for founding Odyssey actually come about? Well, I've always had a passion for real estate and investment, and I purchased my first asset when I was the ripe old age of 17 years old. Oh, wow. And I, Yeah, and after that, I continued to invest uh, for my family office, and I'm currently invested in nine different countries in the real estate space across a range of sub-asset classes, including residential development, commercial, student accommodation, even agriculture, just to name a few. So my career background was originally in investment banking in Australia, as you mentioned before. I spent 10 years with Macquarie Bank, which was Australia's leading and still is Australia's leading investment bank. And they had just acquired a business in Hong Kong. And that afforded me the opportunity to pursue my dream to move to Asia and participate in the growing Asian economy, which was where I saw the greatest future opportunities. So my decision to be an entrepreneur and co-found Odyssey Capital Group was really based off my passion, which I continue to have, for identifying unique and interesting alternative investment opportunities, and specifically within the real estate space, in thematics that I think are interesting, in markets that we believe represent great value, and in specific niche projects that we can enhance value in, along with our local teams and execution partners, of course. Okay, so you set up Odyssey Capital with that view of providing your clients with unique access to some of Asia's more exciting real estate-related projects. Um, could you tell us a bit about the first few projects that, you've, uh, that you and Odyssey have been involved in, the ones that sort of put you on the map, so to speak? Yes, um, we've done a number of projects, and I guess we're now known for bringing to market very differentiated ideas. Just for example... Um, we have looked at self-storage in Hong Kong uh, before anyone was really looking at it. Also, in the agriculture space, we like wineries and vineyards, specifically in New Zealand and Australia. And we've even looked at such yeah, and even we've even looked at such things as coffee shops in Vietnam. However, one of the projects I'm most proud of is the acquisition of a 200-year-old Jap Japanese sake brewery in Osaka called Daimon Brewery. This was an opportunity to acquire a very historical and beautiful property that had a very special story. And we were very honoured to work with both the sixth and seventh generation family of Diamond Brewery, as well as bringing in international strategic investors to co-invest alongside us. Um, these investors helped us renovate and invigorate both the real estate but also the, the underlying factory and business. Now, we learnt a lot about traditional Japanese businesses, and it also opened our eyes to some remarkable opportunities in the domestic economy. And I guess at the end of the day, our conclusion was that Japan has some really unique assets and opportunities, and it's definitely something that we'll be spending many years working on. Yeah, we definitely want to hear more about that one. But before we go into it, how did you end up setting up your sights on Japan in the first place? What, what actually drew you to the country from an investment perspective? Well, I've always loved Japan. The architecture, the culture, the food, 
In fact, I've been traveling to Japan for many years and even bought a holiday home in Kyoto, a 200 year old house, which I recently renovated to bring back to its original condition.、Mm. My natural interest in the country naturally led to the discovery of unique opportunities there, but I had to wait for the perfect storm and it had to be at the right time. The strong drivers that we saw in, in the local tourism market, the booming resurgence of interest from international tourists as well as domestic tourists, Um, and the real structural changes occurring under the、uh, current Prime Minister Abe with the re- easing of visa restrictions and the coming of the Olympics and, and, and so forth. How could I not be drawn to the place? There was a lot of activity going on. Right. And your first project here was Diamond Sake Brewery, which you've just mentioned. So tell us a bit about that one. How did it start? What's involved in it? And mainly, where is it now? Yes. I mean, Diamond Brewery is a very unique project, as I mentioned before. It includes a blend of a number of interesting assets that have all experienced、uh, very strong growth since, since we've taken over the asset.、Um, when you look at the project at its individual pieces, it's very interesting because, firstly, it's a fully functioning and scalable brewery operation, and it also has surplus land which can be developed, including access to 37 acres of forest.、Um, it includes existing traditional accommodation. And peripheral properties that someday could be repositioned into other uses, like a hotel, is one idea we have, or a retail food and beverage concept that complements the existing brewery. And it has some other unique assets, including access to water rights and a natural spring on the property, which is very unusual for a sake brewery.、Mm. And of course, we, we now have significant brand and intellectual property driven by the experienced brewery team and master Diamond San, who is a legend in the sake world. As well as his existing management team. So, the work and the team involved are really nothing short of exceptional. We've already seen significant growth in distribution and sales of our world class internationally awarded sake. And I'm also very confident that property will continue to increase in value. And, and I must say, if any of the listeners are around in the Kyoto, Kansai region, please let me know as, as the brewery is open for tours and tastings and even has a nice restaurant serving nabe, hot pot cuisine. Plus, of course, the sake is excellent tasting.、Mm. And, okay, and now with that project well underway, you've launched a second Japanese project focusing on traditional boutique style accommodation. Tell us more about that one. Yes,、uh, well, born off the back of the Diamond Brewery deal, we noticed strong interest and upside potential from not only the private equity portion of what we we're doing, but really the real estate portion of the project was very interesting. We were seeing real potential and immediately started to work on structuring another deal in Japan. Where could we find the opportunities in the real estate market? Now we've created a fund which is able to capitalize upon the tremendous fundamentals of the Japanese real estate market, but it's specifically the hospitality industry. Our core strategy with the fund is to acquire, acquire renovate, reposition, and operate traditional and boutique luxury hospitality assets. We're focusing on a very niche, which is this repositioned、uh, asset class of boutique luxury hospitality assets that embody and the beauty and refinement of traditional Japanese design. As I briefly mentioned before, J- Japan is being rediscovered by both international、uh, investors and tourists. And there is a long term secular change that's occurring that we believe will drive fundamental, favorable,、uh, high demand for hospitality services. And this, with、uh, inefficient supply over the longer term, creates a perfect storm.、Um, but we did see a massive spike in business hotels, and we knew that we needed to therefore focus not on、um, the limited service part of the market, but we wanted to focus on boutique luxury hospitality segment, which is highly sought after by the most affluent hospitality customer who seeks high quality luxury and a more unique and personalized experience. And this is, as I said before, where we're seeing real supply shortages over the next few years. Absolutely. And this project you mentioned is actually structured as a fund, meaning investors can buy into the entire pool of properties and with smaller or bigger shares of the profit, depending on their investment. Is that right? Exactly right.、Uh, to be clear, this is a portfolio. We have a pipeline of assets that are very interesting. And we knew this was a real opportunity that we had to take advantage of. So, we're continuing to identify a fantastic number of quality assets that we'll put into a fund structure 
as a portfolio. And we're extremely excited to share this with our investors. So what kind of dividends or, or other financial benefits are, are forecasted with the fund? What, what investors who participate then look forward to making on it? Well, based on our pipeline of uh, real estate opportunities, uh, qualifying investors can expect an 8% uh, per annum preferred return paid in half yearly instalments over the next five years. Um, but we anticipate that the total return may be closer to 15% plus when you also include the likely improvement in the capital values. Right. That's not bad at all. Sounds like a good project to get involved in. Um, are there any other perks for investors? Do they get to, I don't know, say, enjoy some free discounted weekend getaways in some of those properties that the fund is investing in? Anything of that sort? Of course. Uh, we also have great perks in the form of hotel stay discounts and preferential treatment through our invite-only VIP club. We're actually in very uh, serious discussions with um, a couple of other VIP clubs that we might be able to bring into this uh, this hospitality offering. So we have some really interesting perks that we're working on and uh, in order to give more back to our investors and to enjoy the properties. But the best are yet to come. Okay, good stuff. Um, folks, listeners, we've got a special surprise for you. Um, anyone who contacts Dan or Odyssey or via ourselves to participate in the fund and mentions that they were referred via NTI or via this podcast, you'll then be able to buy into the fund from as little as 50,000 US dollars, which is half of the standard minimum for normal participating investors. And also you're going to get your sign-up fees waived altogether, which can come up to a good few extra percentage points on your yields. We're going to link to Odyssey's websites and contact details in this episode's show notes. So just drop them a line, mention that you're interested in the Japan Boutique Hospitality Fund and that you were referred via NTI. And that's really all you need to do in order to enjoy this special exclusive offer. So Dan, what's next on Odyssey's rather? What, what are you looking at these days as far as your next projects in Japan are concerned or even elsewhere in Asia? Yeah, so stay tuned. <laughs> we'll continue to seek out very best and differentiated ideas. Uh, however, at the moment, we believe the key opportunities in the Japan boutique hospitality segment for many, many years to come. Okay, fantastic. So a lot to look forward to in the next few years. I know that we here at NTI will definitely be more than happy to get involved again in the Japan side of things, as will our clients and listeners, and we'll be watching the development of your current projects very closely as well. I'm sure they'll do well knowing the level of research and due diligence that you guys perform on all of your projects. Well, thank you very much for taking the time to chat with us today, Dan. It was a pleasure having you with us. Thank you very much, Siv, and uh, uh, thank you to all your listeners also. Folks, that's it from us today. Thank you again for being with us. Um, as mentioned, we're going to link to Odyssey's websites and give you some contact details in the episode show notes. If you did enjoy this episode, as usual, please feel free to share it with your networks or anyone who may find it uh, of interest. And please definitely do leave us a rating if you can spare the minute um, in, the, in the iTunes store, the Google Play store, or wherever you might find us. And that's it from us for today. And until next time, as always, we wish you happy investing.